and welcome. Um, we are today here today with um, Harrison College and ourselves Incubate Migration Services. Um, we're going to be touching on um, the very different pathways to migration with special focus on education. Um, we're going to split the presentation um, into two speakers, so all three speakers. Um, so we'll be talking about um, Harrison College's programs as well as um, immigration programs. And um, from Harrison College today, we have Tony and Christina, where they will both will be speaking. Um, and without uh, further ado, I will let Tony start that introduction uh, for the Harrison part. Good day. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tony Lamanto. I'm the admissions director for Hearsing College, Montreal campus. I want to thank Incubate for organizing this webinar. I'm sure it will be beneficial for, uh, for all of us. So let's start by introducing Hearsing College. Um, on to the next slide. Uh, we Herzing College was founded in 1965 by Dr. Henry Herzing. Uh, we have campuses in Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg. Uh, all our programs are offered in English and French. So that's based on the preference of the student. They can select the language that they want to study with or in. Um, our education is designed to bridge the gap between uh, employers and graduates. So we understand what the employers need and we pretty much tailor the program to be able to fulfill those needs of the employer. So our graduates are able to uh, find, uh, uh, used to, uh, are able to adapt their skill sets immediately in the workforce. Um, so again, our graduates learn all the necessary skills to begin working immediately. Um, so we've been serving the community for almost 58 years. Uh, we're accredited by the Minister of Education and Higher Education. The students acquire a level of work experience due to our highly recognized internship program. So all our programs have internships between eight weeks and three months, depending on the program. Uh, we are very career focused, convenient, and we're caring towards our students. Um, our instructors are dedicated to the success of the students. And uh, our vocational training is provided in two years or less and it gives the students the skills they need to be employed. So our Herzing partners, we partner, sorry, with businesses so that we can address what these employers need in an employee. All our programs, as I mentioned, are co-op programs and have internships in the student's field of study. The students have the same instructor for the entire session, and we follow up and make sure our students are progressing accordingly. Mm -hmm. So in as an overview, general summarization is the fact that we have been successful for almost 60 years because our students have been successful. Our students are successful because we listen to our employers in order to make sure our curriculum matches their needs. Uh, again, our vocational training is done in two years or less, depending on the program. It can go from 15 months to 24 months, depending. And we have embraced uh, international students from dozens of countries all over the world uh, for over 20 years. We understand their culture, we understand the needs, and we service them accordingly. Uh, depending on the student's preference, the Montreal campus offers programs in both English and French. Uh, Maria, I think we can go on with you. Thank you, Tony. Awesome. So just quick introduction about our team. Uh, my name is Maria Carces, a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, and I work with Incubate team. Um, I'll provide more details on, on uh, what we do. Uh, but uh, just as a quick intro, I am specialized um, in consultations and creating those pathways for immigration for our clients. I also speak Spanish, um, and we'll see um, all the languages that our team can offer services in. This is our founder and principal consultant, uh, Mr. Basil Sauder, also a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. He has over 10 years in the immigration field, both in the U.S. and Canada, um, and he's the one who founded um, our, our company. 
Now, a little bit about our team um, and the main reason why we like to, to show this slide is because most of us um, came initially here as foreign nationals to Canada uh, with different backgrounds and through different avenues. And most of us are in the way or have already obtained our permanent residency or citizenship, which comes to say that um, there is a pathway for everyone. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the over 60 available programs that um, are open right now for immigration. Um, and of course, our uh, Chief Wolf Officer, Rexy. Perfect, these are our licenses. So we are licensed to represent clients and uh, provide advice all over Canada, um, including Quebec. Uh, Quebec does require another um, license um, and we do come with that. So we can do anything from CAQ, CSQs and applications with the government of Quebec as well. We have four offices across Canada, our main one being in Toronto, um, the one in Vancouver, where is, which is where I'm located today, our newest office in Calgary, and also in Montreal. Now we have over eight years of experience in um, Canada's immigration industry. We work together with schools, uh, with partners, and obviously with clients all over the world to assist them in their immigration needs, um, whether you don't know or whether a client doesn't know um, anything about immigration or whether they just need help with their application, we're here to assist them. And uh, we do uh, quite a lot of uh, webinars or information sessions like this to make sure that our all partners are up to date with immigration trends and, and news from IRCC. We offer our services in English, French, Spanish, Arabic, and Portuguese. Um, so if you have any students, any clients that require um, service in any of these languages, we'll be happy to assist them. And a little overview on the services that we provide. Um, this is, again, really, really um, quick overview. Temporary residence, we include everything from visitors, visas, study permits, work permits, and extensions of such. And um, obviously done from outside or inside Canada or at a port of entry. Um, and then we have our permanent residence service or permanent residency category, uh, which includes um, anything from provincial and federal programs to citizenship applications. So we have experience and can assist clients with all these services. Now we're gonna, the first part of the, um, of the presentation is gonna focus on um, study permits, authorization to works and how to obtain one. And later on, um, the other half will focus on immigration programs and how um, the immigration system work and what factors to look at when planning uh, for immigration to Canada. Now, um, a study permit, as you may know, um, it is granted mainly for those who want to come to study in Canada for at least six months. Um, we also may need a co-op work permit, um, which as Tony was saying, uh, most of Hersing or all of Hersing's programs do count with a co-op placement. So students will also require um, that work permit. It is submitted together and we'll talk about um, some interesting rates in the next slides. However, if um, your student wants to study in the province of Quebec, um, they also need to obtain authorization from the minister and um, through what we call a CAQ. It is a process that's done directly with the government of Quebec. And as we said, we can also assist with this. Once we have an approved CAQ, we can go ahead and apply for the study permit. And again, this is only for those attending uh, programs in the Montreal campus. There may be um, students, depending on what country um, they're from, that may require a TRV, a temporary resident visa. Um, usually, or generally speaking, whenever we apply for a study permit from outside Canada, a student will also get issued a temporary resident visa. And this is a document that will allow them to enter the country. What gives them status is a study permit, but the TRV will allow them to um, enter into Canada. Or if you are from a TRV exempt country, you may only require an ETA, an electronic travel authorization. Um, most European countries fall under this category. And again, it would also be issued when applying for a study permit. Now, there is a way or there are 
um, options for those who are in Canada as visitors to apply for a study permit from within Canada. Generally speaking, applications must be submitted from outside Canada, but there are certain circumstances or there are certain situations that um, exempt um, candidates from having to leave the country or apply from outside. Um, and that is if we receive what we call a CLOA, a conditional letter of acceptance. What this means is that we need to get admissions into a, a program um, where a condition is stated. Once we met that condition, we are eligible to apply for our study permit, for example, and probably the most common one is the pathway language program. So our letter of acceptance would mention or would state that the student needs to meet certain weeks or certain um, level of English. Um, this is something that uh, Christina will touch a little bit more towards the end of the presentation. Um, but once that condition is met, once we have completed those um, English classes or English weeks, what we call a pathway program, we're then eligible to apply for our study permit from inside Canada, meaning that the student will not require to leave the country and can remain in, can in Canada while the processing of their application. Okay. This applies for both English and French programs. Um, now, something very interesting is that continuously expanding list of SDS countries. Uh, what SDS stands for is the Student Direct Stream. Um, some of you would be familiar with this, but what this um, stream allows candidates to do is get their uh, temporary residence or their study permits in a faster way. Um, usual times we see for this is 30 to 40 days versus two to three months uh, for regular study permit applications. We see much higher approval rates through the SDS stream, but it also comes with other requirements such as having to prove certain level of language, having paid your first year of tuition and, um, and so on. So um, it is a great way for those who already have met that language requirement and can sit down for, for the test. Again, approval rate is higher, especially for um, some of the countries that are mentioned in, in this list. Um, and a lot of countries were recently added in the past two years. Um, now we found countries like Brazil, Costa Rica, or Morocco added to the SDS stream. Now, studying in Quebec, as I mentioned, does require students to get a CAQ, a certificate of acceptance from the ministry, from the province. Um, this is an application that has to be made prior to applying for a study permit, and that needs to cover the entire duration of the program. If for any reason CAQ is issued for a shorter time, or we end up postponing our intake date, we need to make sure that in order for a student to remain um, in, um, in good standing with, with the school and their program, their CAQ is valid as well as their study permit. It is now done through an online process, um, which has facilitated a lot the application. And um, usually we're seeing processing times of three to four weeks. Um, worth mentioning too that some client or some countries do require um, applicants to show financials. There's the list of clients for that. Um, if you have questions on this, we'd be happy to answer them as well. Now let's talk a little about work permits and what are the options for graduates of private career colleges uh, that don't have access to that post-graduation work permit. A lot of, or this, this big misunderstanding of no chances, and that is not true at all. Canada actually has a lot of interesting options for, um, for work permits. In this case, we're talking about closed work permits, which most of them are based on, on having a job offer. So we have grouped them into um, six main categories. These are not all of them. There's a very long list still available, but uh, we have put together um, probably the most popular ones um, here. So um, just um, generally speaking, for a Canadian employer to hire a foreign national, we need to go through a process called an LMA, a labor market impact assessment. And it is a process by which the employer has to demonstrate the need of hiring that foreign national through a recruitment process, a recruitment period. So the employer needs to go ahead, advertise the position for four weeks, and prepare an application or petition um, to hire a foreign national. If ESDC, which is the labor branch of the government, approved this 
um, hiring and, and make, come to the decision that there will be no negative impact on hiring a foreign national, we get what's called a positive LMA. And with a positive LMA, we can go ahead and apply for a work permit as a foreign national. Um, this is the standard, what we call sponsorship process or um, LMA process. Um, but the list of, of permits that we have listed here are actually LMI exempt, meaning that if an employer is not willing to go through the process or um, just does not want to apply for an LMIA, we can fit or we can find another solution for that person to apply for an LMI exempt work permit. So it will still be a closed work permit, but won't require that LMIA, that two to three month process um, for that I just mentioned. So, um, as a brief example, international agreements, free trade agreements that Canada has with other countries, such as the CUSMA, previously known as NAFTA, Colombia's free trade agreement, uh, Chile free trade agreement. There's a long list of these agreements that exempt certain foreign nationals from needing that sponsorship and can directly apply for a work permit. Um, there's also a list that's not based on nationalities, but it's based on Canadian interest and what these individuals can bring to um, Canadian society and economy. Um, probably my favorite one, which is the Francophone Mobility, under the Francophone Mobility Program, the code C16, LMIA exemption code C16, which exempts foreign nationals from meeting that LMIA for the fact of speaking an upper intermediate level of French. We have a whole slide on this that I'll um, explain in further detail but it's a great way for anyone from any nationality um, by demonstrating that upper intermediate level of French to obtain a work permit in Canada. Uh, there are other um, categories here, such as the intra-company transfer, if we were get transferred from um, an institution abroad or the International Experience Canada, also quite famous, which includes working holiday and young professionals. Uh, what most people don't know is that with the support of recognized organizations, which are designated by the government, um, one can apply for this category multiple times and even nationalities that are regularly not covered under these agreements the, of the International Experience Canada are eligible to do so. So uh, we see a very broad list of countries here um, that will open opportunities for, for many students upon graduation. And finally, we have the famous open work permit. So this includes anything from the post-graduation work permit, uh, working holiday, which was also in the previous category, or uh, being the accompanying spouse of an international student or skilled worker in Canada. Now, I won't touch too much on this one because um, I briefly explained in the previous slide, um, but just reiterating the, the labor market impact assessment and the process that the employer um, needs to go through. Right, now let's move on to what are those permanent residency options, as most of you are aware of. Um, for a lot of international students, um, their end goal in Canada is to apply for permanent residency, or even if they're not sure at the beginning, from my experience, I tend to see that students that came initially with the idea of just studying and staying temporarily turn out wanting to stay for the long term. So in a broad overview, we have um, the immigration route through the temporary residence, so as a student or a worker. Uh, we also have immigration route of a skilled professional, mainly through express entry, um, also by investment or as a business immigrant, family class, which includes spousal sponsorship and other types of family immigration, and lastly, refugee um, or asylum protected person class. We're going to focus today on the first two, um, which is what mainly involves um, international students coming to Canada. Now, immigrating to Canada as a skilled professional, also using your temporary residence, um, stay in Canada, um, comes in many ways. Um, selection happens both at a federal and a provincial level. We'll talk about provincial programs in a second here, but we have put together uh, the main different routes or avenues that we see for these um, pathways to immigration as a skilled worker. So whether we count with an advanced level of the languages, that's English or French, in combination with other factors, we can get enough points to receive that invitation. 
um, whether we come with both languages, um, at least at an upper intermediate level, will also get uh, quite some points and potentially receive that invitation through studies in Canada. Um, again, we can gain points for having a higher level of education. Work in Canada will add quite some points to um, and make us eligible through the Canadian Experience class or through a provincial program. And uh, what's becoming very popular as well is through having a job offer in Canada, not necessarily at a federal level, but at a provincial level. We'll touch on some of the programs as well. Um, and last and definitely, I don't know if least for uh, most of us, but moving to a smaller province does bring down the requirements when it comes to languages. Um, again, we'll fo focus on the first five here. Now, at a federal level, so um, not Quebec, someone who wants or who's interested and intending to immigrate in a, another province or territory outside of Quebec um, would think of Express Entry as the go-to system for this. Um, it has been a system in place for already eight years now. And it's a point-based system that selects candidates based on a score. So um, the old system used to be first in, first out. This express entry system works in a best in, first out, as in um, only those with the highest score will get selected. Now, this score comes from the combination of what we call selection factors. And selection factors are determined by the government. These are the four listed here, level of languages, level of education, work experience as long as it's in a qualified occupation and your age, which unfortunately we can do nothing about, but we, if we are losing any points for age, we compensate with other factors. Now, the current draws that we're seeing as of today, as of two weeks ago, if I remember well, it's for 490 points and above, which is quite a high um, score. And this is due to the long pause that took place during the pandemic, but we're starting to see the draws um, we happen again, uh, which is good news, and hopefully the score will start going down. However, we don't expect the score to go below the 470s, 480s, um, just because of the quality of the candidates that we see on the pool. Now, how do we reach that 490 and above points? Uh, we have to focus on these factors and mastering um, the languages. So achieving an advanced level of English or French is actually key to immigrate through express entry. Um, when it comes to education, having master's degree or above, or a combination of a bachelor's degree and a one-year diploma in Canada. One year, just to clarify, is eight months academic. Um, having three years of experience outside Canada, full-time in a qualified occupation, and being under the age of 30, this combination here will give us a very strong position in that pool of candidates with higher chances of receiving that invitation to apply. Um, and again, just highlighting here um, the fact that having a three-year program or a bachelor's degree completed outside Canada in combination with a one-year diploma in Canada, whether that's in a public or a private institution, will give us the same points for transferability as a master's degree. Um, so someone who already comes with a certain level of education will definitely upgrade and go up when it comes to the points um, under express entry if completing one year of studies in Canada. Okay, let's focus a little bit on French just because it has been the priority for the government uh, for the past two to three years. And um, they have announced how they want to continue um, recruiting fran francophone immigration for provinces outside of Quebec. So at a point level, so through express entry, um, it was announced already two and a half years ago um, that the express entry points, the bonus points were doubled, uh, previously 25, now 50 points in combination with a basic level of English. So we require upper basic intermediate level of English, CLB5, in combination with an upper intermediate level of French, um, will give us um, extra 50 points and 12 points for having a second language. Just so you know, having an upper intermediate level of French will give us more points than um, a job offer supported by a labor market impact assessment through Express Entry. And not only that, but that upper intermediate French will also give us access to that LMI exemption code I was mentioning a few slides ago, um, C16, 
So should student have a job offer? And this is something that we see, uh, it's very common, especially for programs with co-op components. Um, the placement or the, the company where they do their co-op placement could potentially lead them to um, an extended job offer that would allow them to apply for exemption codes such as the C16. So upper intermediate level of French in combination with a job offer in a qualified occupation outside of Quebec will exempt the foreign national from needed a labor market impact assessment and would allow them to apply for a work permit. Perfect. Now, I will touch on and give you an example of one of the um, key provincial programs that have done a great job in recruiting Francophone immigration, and that is the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program for French speaking skilled workers. Um, it works together with Express Entry System, meaning that it selects candidates from that Express Entry pool. And the requirements for the program are to have um, a bachelor's degree, at least, one year of experience, whether that's outside or inside Canada, an intermediate level of English, and an upper intermediate level of French. The focus is French in this main program. And again, when I say upper intermediate, we're referring to that CLB7, to that B2 level that we've been um, seeing in the previous slides. Um, there are two exams that one could take to demonstrate French. We have the TEF Canada, which is the one here, and um, the TCF Canada. They all have different scoring. So if you have questions about um, the charts and how it transfers into the CLB levels, um, let us know. I'll be happy to share more details. Now, what a provincial program means is that we first go through the provincial selection level, as in we participate in the province's program. If we get selected and um, our applications go through, we would get what's called a nomination, a certificate of nomination. And with that certificate of nomination, we can go ahead and apply for permanent residency. So it is a great tool for those who are struggling to reach um, the high points that we see on express entry draws these days. Um, and it's a great avenue uh, for someone to um, don't focus so much on the point of express entry and go for something at a provincial level, um, should we be eligible. Generally speaking, uh, what we see at a provincial level is that candidates get selected um, or provincial programs are crafted uh, for different publics. Um, we can be selected based on our occupation being in demand, we can also be selected at a provincial level if we have a job offer in that province from a qualified employer. And again, this is not sponsorship. This is a job offer from an eligible employer. We could also apply through one of the provincial programs that do have work experience as a requirement in the province, or last but not least, having um, studies in that province. Um, most provinces ask for uh, public uh, colleges though. Now, in regards to next steps, and just be hopefully before I hand it over back to Tony, um, we do offer consultations, we do offer assessment services for um, clients and individuals interested in immigrating. Uh, we craft a plan and we um, lay out the steps um, to that they need to follow to achieve their permanent residency goals. Um, as I said, there are many avenues based on nationality, based on language skills, and uh, we're happy to sit down with um, students and clients and walk them through all these steps of the process. Um, so if you are interested or clients are interested in um, these services, please feel free to reach out. I will provide with the contact details towards the end of the presentation. And if you have any questions, please hold them up. We'll be answering questions um, towards the end. But now I'll pass it back to Tony. Floor is yours. Hi. Okay, I just wanted to outline some of the benefits that uh, students will receive uh, by by studying at uh, at Herzing College. Uh, again, uh, all our programs. I want to remind you that all our programs do have co-op or, or internships, um, anywhere from eight weeks to to three months. Um, we've been under the same ownership, uh, which is the Herzing family, since 1965. Um, one big advantage that we offer our students in comparison to everyone else uh, in, in our industry, is the fact that we provide them with a trust account for their tuition deposits. So when they do make a tuition, it doesn't come to Herzing College. It's actually put in a trust account 
until the student begins the program. And if the, per, the student decides to eventually uh, uh, withdraw from the program uh, prior to starting, that'll it'll be uh, uh, it'll be refunded back to the student through the trust account. Um, the other advantage is the fact that we allow students to pay monthly. So all we ask them to do is to at least commit the first semester of payment, and then uh, they'll be able to go on a monthly payment, to therefore making their financial situation less of a burden on a monthly basis. Um, our education is provided by industry professionals. The instructors are all professionals who have uh, already worked in the industries that they're teaching. Um, and again, we follow up to make sure our students are progressing accordingly. And we have a very, very huge commitment to the success of our students. So we're always on them, on top of them, following them. If they have issues or concerns, they're welcome to talk to anybody, instructors, the, the Dean of Education, myself, even though I'm admissions, I mean, I still, I'm still there for the students. Okay, uh, next slide. So uh, I just wanna remind uh, you of other requirements that we, we need here in order, in order to issue a letter of acceptance. So before we issue the letter of acceptance, we need the student to provide us with a copy of the last two years of transcripts, a copy of their diploma, we also need a copy of the birth certificate, as well as a copy of their passport. They should have an IELTS 6.0 with no band less than 5.5. Um, and they need at some times, uh, at, at one point or another, they may need to pass an entrance evaluation exam to see if they meet the criteria of the college and the program itself. Uh, at that point, you apply for a CAQ. And once they receive their CAQ, they go ahead and apply for their visa. Uh, and once they receive their uh, CAQ and study permit or visa permit, uh, the study permit, usually what they do is they receive it at the airport once they land. Uh, they can send that to us and we will reserve and confirm their place in the program. Up to that point, they are applicants of the college. So they've been accepted conditionally uh, up until they get their study permit and, and CAQ, and we receive that. As simple as that, nothing complicated. Now, in terms of tuition, um, based on the program, our tuition fees are uh, are always based on, on the type of program that they take. If uh, uh, the uh, programs that we're offering at the moment are all pro programs that are in very, very high demand in terms of employment. So if you take our microcomputers and networking program, huge demand in that industry for for uh, for resources as well as the programmer analyst program uh, we also offer the early childhood education program which is also in very high demand um, and uh, and the, an, another one that is is obviously because of globalization and and you know countries uh, doing business all over the world we offer the import export international commerce program <laughs> Very yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if you need any information on those programs, I'd, I'd be more than happy to send you the information. You could visit our website at www.herzing.ca slash Montreal for the Montreal curriculums uh, and dot herzing.ca. Let's say if you want to get information on our other programs from our various other, uh, other uh, campuses. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, I think after Christina's uh, presentation on our uh, language pathways, uh, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Awesome. There we go. Your resource. Okay. So, um, in the spirit of um, helping students um, fulfill their dreams, um, at Hertzin College, um, there are different language options now, um, and they all support the students in this um, journey um, with the aim of um, achieving their um, college degree and uh, staying in Canada to work and maybe even settle in Canada afterwards. Um, 
So Hudson College has now an in-house language test and students will be able to take it and see if they can qualify for direct admissions. They need to qualify at level B2. And then uh, this means that they don't need to pay for an IELTS or a TOEFL um, exam. Uh, students who do not have the required level, they can register in the Pathway English program or French. But this is done. Um, a lot of students around the world have an intermediate level of English, but they don't have the high intermediate. So they might need just one or two sessions in the language program, so six weeks or 12 weeks, or probably 18 weeks would be uh, on the longer side of it, so um, three months or four months, to be uh, ready to start their college program. So the Pathway English program is designed to receive students um, who at the most study 24 weeks and then they can start their college program. And um, we also uh, added a part-time French program from beginner to high intermediate, which is offered free of charge to all Hertzian College students. So over the two years that the students would study in English and perfect their English um, during this time in the classroom with their colleagues and with the, all the learning and um, related activities, um, they will be um, eligible to register and take part-time French, um, six levels, three hours a week at no extra cost. This is a very, very beautiful um, um, option that will make sure that when students graduate Hertzian College, they will have that extra degree they will have the high level of English and they will have the high level of French. So they can uh, qualify for the two um, high intermediate English or French, or if they're ambitious, they can qualify for um, super English and high intermediate French or one of the combinations uh, possible. So just by coming to Hertzian College, choosing Hertzian College, you can get your extra diploma, you can get a job in demand, and um, you can get your French too. So suddenly um, candidates uh, for um, the um, um, after studies become very, very um, eligible for any of the provincial immigration programs or work permits or um, all the things that Maria talked about. Okay, and can we change the slide? Um, the English Pathway Program is as neat as it possibly can be. It has four levels, A1, A2, B1, B2, um, six weeks in each level, 24 weeks in total. So students can, uh, in theory, come even with a tourist visa and start learning English. And then when they're in B1, they can um, apply for the... Um, CAQ and start moving documentation along. Um, it's 20 hours a week. Um, admissions is based on the in-house language test, so no extra cost for a language test. And they can either come with a conditional letter or they can do the switch here in Canada and apply from inside Canada. So there's a lot of flexibility here and um, Incubate can help um, build any kind of scenarios because we have the options. Okay. Um, and we also have a French language pathway program. Um, this is a full year, 48 weeks levels in French for students who are ambitious enough and who really want to stay in Quebec most likely or who target really um, ambitious uh, positions um, and who need a um, strong level of um, French for their um, future. So whichever the choice, we're here to support the students and um, add to their um, chances for their um, project. Thank you. And we also have um, in the next slide, 
because language is so important and because it's an extra cost and it's an extra hurdle, we're trying to make it more enticing. So come to Hudson College, uh, register for a college program, and depending on the number of weeks you need in the language program, we will offer a scholarship. So if somebody starts from beginner English or French for 24 weeks, they can get a $4,000 scholarship on the tuition on the college program. And then we go um, progressively. If they need three levels, so 18 weeks, then the scholarship is 3,500 applied on the tuition fees for the college program. Then 3,000, then 2,500. Students who already have an IELTS or the successful Hertzing in-house test and they don't need language, uh, qualify for a $2,000 scholarship and students who, on the other hand, have an excellent level in English, they would be just rewarded $3,000 scholarship. Any questions? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, Christina. Um, we'll leave now some time for questions. Um, feel free to, to uh, type them in the chat box. And either Tony, Christina, or myself will be happy to answer them. So don't be shy. Ask us questions. We have some time to answer them, whether that's through, uh, for uh, the programs, Hersing, Language Pathways, or anything we presented in regards to immigration. So Hello. Um, hi there. Hi, this is Mohammed from Marrakesh, Morocco. Hi, Mohammed. Thank you for joining. Sorry, I, I didn't attend since the beginning. I just clicked, but somebody else from the office is at, attending. My question is sometimes we get people who have already a university degree, mm -hmm. like a bachelor's, and then because of the lack of job opportunities and so on here, they don't mind studying uh, from scratch. That means uh, taking over and studying at Herzig. Mm -hmm. Is this is there a possibility for this kind of students? Absolutely. So uh, we have to look at this in two different ways. Possibilities in terms of um, maximizing the approval for that study permit. For that, what we advise is if the client already has or if the student already has certain level of education, make sure that the program they choose at Hersing shows a continuation of those studies. So um, as long as we're not repeating um, and I know you mentioned start from scratch, as long as we are not um, doing exactly what we have back home, whether that's a specialization on um, you know, business or um, export, um, something that shows that progression on their career and education path, um, it will show to the officer that that person wants to grow uh, professionally and it will justify the reason for that investment in coming to Canada. So um, we we advise uh, for students who are interested in, in coming to Canada to really emphasize that on their study plan and the letter of intent and um, make sure that they really specify uh, what's the main reason and why that program will be beneficial for their career path. Now, the other perspective we look at it is in terms of immigration, what are their future chances, what are their future possibilities, um, especially for French speaking nationals, the possibilities are very, very um, wide in Canada, especially at a federal level outside of the province of Quebec. There's still options in, in Quebec through sponsorship, uh, but French is a great tool that uh, will allow students upon graduation to either apply for a work permit or to get necessary points to apply for immigration under express entry. So definitely focus on languages and that combination of studies, like I mentioned in um, a few slides ago of the previous bachelors back home with their um, uh, one year program or the studies at Hersing will give them a very strong um, asset and will give them a, quite some points for uh, their education factor under express entry. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, and if I may just follow up, uh, uh, sure. can a student, for example, change their major? For example, they studied business or something and then they would like to change into, let's say, uh, computer science or right. some other major? Would that be a possibility? Yes, it's definitely a possibility. And our recommendation is to provide as much supporting 
um, documents and, and reasoning to why that change is being made. Uh, for example, I did my major back home in business, but then I realized that employment opportunities are not as, as good as I thought they were. Or I'm not enjoying working in this industry. And this is why at this point in time, I am deciding to pursue this career. Um, what I usually uh, work with students on, on doing is providing more details into what are the future employment rates or um, yeah, what are the future employment rates for that program that we're choosing in Canada? For example, uh, I'll put um, the one you gave, um, computer science, if perhaps we can argue and prove facts that um, positions within that industry are growing, I will have a high, a much higher salary or I will have a much higher career growth. Um, these are strong reasons for uh, a student to explain why they're doing this career change. So our recommendation is to always provide um, an explanation for it, and this gets reflected in that uh, study plan or um, their, their purpose of, of travel to Canada. And if it's accompanied by facts, by you know some research that we've done on the market, and by a logic reason, it is completely possible. Thank you. No worries. You're welcome. Perfect. And then we see Lubna asked a question on the chat. Um, okay, I'll read it out loud. If we have some students who graduated from an English institution in their countries, university or international student, is there a possibility to avoid the language requirement if they provide you with a proof of studying English from the university? And I think this can be answered by either Tony or Christina. They can take our free in-house test and if they pass that level and they show that they have the proficiency, then that's okay. But um, in terms of um, where they graduated and how and so on, there's different ways to evaluate and to simplify that it has to be in, for example, you graduate from an institution as an English teacher um, and, and you come to Canada, you still have to show IELTS because you didn't graduate from a British university um, in your country in Asia, for example. So if it was in a bilingual environment or international or whatever, it's not enough. But like I said, because we have the in-house language test, the students can take that, the candidates can take that test. And if they show, and most likely they will show that they have the level, mm -hmm. then that's fine. They don't need to pay for IELTS to show uh, their level. They can take our in-house test. Perfect. Thank you, Christina. And thank you for the question, Lubna. Um, what other questions do we have? Wait a couple more minutes in case someone's typing a question or you can just simply unmute yourself and ask since there's not a lot of us in, in the room. Uh, I wonder if I can add another question. Absolutely. Yes, uh, uh, just to, uh, I may have missed the beginning of the presentation. So with the co-op option, mm -hmm. uh, do we have any programs with co-op option? Yes. yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, Mohammed. Hi, this is Tony. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, as I mentioned, hi. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, we all our programs have co-op. Uh, again, based on on the program itself, it might be anywhere from eight weeks to three months. So if you look at a networking, microcomputers and networking uh, program or a programmer analyst course, those have a three month uh, postgraduate work permit. Um, early childhood education has a two month, uh, I'm sorry, uh, internship, I'm sorry. Early internship, yeah. yeah, early childhood education has a, uh, a, a two month uh, postgraduate, um, I'm sorry, has a two month um, internship program. Yeah, okay. Business is a Thank you. Program. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they all, they, all have, they all have internship, not a problem. All right. Thank I was, you so much. I was distracted over there when I was trying to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. All right. Shut off my phone there. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I get it. Thank you. Okay. No. Thank you for your question. Um, and we are recording the session, so um, we'll, we'll be happy to share that recording after it's done, so you have access to the, to the slides. Um, now, if there are no other questions, I will be leaving our contact details, incubate contact details here. Um, 
again, whether you're interested in understanding more about our immigration services or um, programs about Hersing College, uh, feel free to contact um, Tony or um, Hersing. Uh, Tony, can we leave um, an email address or contact address in the chat where they could reach out if they're interested in understanding or getting more information on your programs? Yeah, I'll just put it in right now. Perfect, thank you. And for Incubate, you can always reach out to us at connect at incubate.ca. Um, we'll be um, preparing I will be scheduling another similar session to this with more emphasis on um, after graduation um, options or um, any news that come up between now and the time that we decide to do the next the next program. There's always updates when it comes to immigration. So as I mentioned, our purpose and our goal is to always keep our partners informed. Uh, perfect. Um, Tony did leave that uh, email address there and I will leave incubates to for any questions that come up. Yeah, so just feel free to contact me at any time if you have questions about the program, tuition, documentation, anything you need, just let me know and uh, I'll answer you as soon as I can, not a problem. Perfect, awesome. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for joining. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Christina, Thank you. Uh, for your great explanations. Uh, we look forward to the next event and I wish everyone a great week or rest of the week. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much, Thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thank care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.